Hi everyone and welcome to this video. In this video I want to show you how to draw fire. And in terms of the supplies I used for this drawing, I used a 2H, a 2B and a 6B pencil, along with blending sticks. And if you don't have blending sticks you could use a brush or cotton buds or a tissue or even your fingers. And then I used a small eraser. As long as your eraser has sharp corners you'll be fine. And then for the paper I used smooth bristol board. You don't need the specific supplies that I use in this video, so don't worry. You can create this drawing with any pencil, paper and eraser. As you can see, I began by sketching some outlines with a 2H pencil. And while doing this, I recommend having some photo references in front of you to guide and inspire the shapes you sketch. And at this point, I'm holding the pencil loosely, not trying to create any tiny specific shapes right away, and just trying to get a rough idea of the overall shape of the flames. I wanted the base of the fire to be wider, then it narrows towards the midsection, and then it widens again towards the top. And while adding this basic layout, I continued to add rough, random, flowing shapes inspired by the reference photos in front of me. If you look at photos of fire, you'll see that there are lots of curving, folding, and flowing lines, but then there'll also be some sharp edges and corners, especially towards the tips of the flames. And the thing that I find really fun about drawings like this is that you can be super relaxed with the process. You don't have to draw any exact shape or detail. Just have some photos in front of you for inspiration and just have fun. Any random shapes you want. Some of my lines are overlapping each other and that's because the flames will be transparent. And I'll try to create that effect in some areas during the shading process. And sometimes a fire will look like it has a bit of a vortex towards the centre, so you can see that I tried to sketch that in amongst the narrower middle section. Once I felt happy with the overall shapes I'd sketched, I started the shading process using a 2B pencil. And I was also consistently using blending sticks to keep the shading smooth. And I worked section by section, adding simple layers of mid-tone shading, imagining it like individual ribbons. And eventually I added darker shadows in the folds and in areas between the different layers. And I also left some highlighted areas to help define the different shapes. And this is quite an abstract part of the process. I, I promise it will make more sense once I get to the later stages of the drawing. This is just the first layer. And uh, think of it like placing the foundation. As I mentioned during the sketch, some parts need to look transparent with multiple layers on top of each other. So in those areas where the outlines were overlapping, I tried to create that effect by continuing to define all the outlines in amongst the different layers of shading. At this stage of the process, you don't need to worry about keeping the details clean and sharp. That's something I focused on during the later stages of the drawing. As I mentioned, this is just the foundation layer before we start adding the details with the small eraser on top of this shading later on. 
I recommend to try not to overthink it. I find this style of drawing really relaxing because honestly there are no rules. <laughs> Every fire looks different and is constantly changing, so you definitely don't need to create any specific shapes or details. That makes it quite cathartic because I felt free to create any shapes I wanted and I defined those shapes with my own choice of shading and highlights and I really recommend trying to approach it in this way. You'll notice that in amongst all the layers of shading and details, I started to add even more pencil outlines, defining twisting shapes like ribbons folding throughout the fire. And I'll use these outlines later on to guide me when I'm adding details with the small eraser. When I felt happy with the foundation layers of shading, I decided it was time to add a background, and for this I used a 6B pencil. Then I brought out a blending stick and blended all the background shading, and while doing this I also started blending some of the details of the fire itself. Don't be afraid to do this, by blurring some of these outside shapes it actually helps to contrast and define the other parts of the fire, making it stand out and look more realistic with more depth. And it can also help to convey a bit of motion, think of it like motion blur. Now it was time for my favourite part of the drawing, adding the highlights with the small eraser. And this part makes a big difference and really helps to make the fire stand out in front of that background. I just followed some of the outlines with the eraser, making sure to vary the thickness of the lines. And it's important not to add highlights around every detail and outline because that could end up completely flattening the drawing. It's nice to have variations between the highlighted, brighter and sharper areas and the shaded and blurred areas. It makes the shape a bit more dynamic and it helps to make the highlights stand out even more. I also sharpened up a few details with a sharpened 2B pencil, cleaning up some of the lines but also making sure to leave some areas with blurred, soft outlining. 
Then after that, I just continued using the small eraser to add a few more wispy details around the flames. And after that, this drawing was completed. I really hope this video helps out. This is such a fun and relaxing drawing to work on, and I highly recommend giving it a try. So be sure to let me know what you think, and also let me know if you have any suggestions for future art videos I should work on. Your suggestions are extremely helpful. If you want to see more videos like this, then feel free to subscribe to this channel, and any likes or shares on this video are hugely appreciated. If you want to follow and support my art progress, then be sure to check out the links in the description for my Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Patreon. And once again, thank you so much for watching, and thank you so much for the support. I really, really appreciate it. I hope you're all doing okay, and I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you all soon.